up to Jimmy Lennon Jr. to bring on Zab Judah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring. Here is the undefeated world champion from the United States, Zab Judah. Yes. Effervescent, skillful, strong, just 22. Interesting storyline. All the marketable qualities can range from junior welter to perhaps middleweight someday. Already labeled Pernell Whitaker with power is Zab Judah. Extraordinary amateur career. Altered on the 96 U.S. Olympic team. Overcame his first knockdown in his last fight with a fourth round knockout of, the, of uh, Jan Bergman, aforementioned, for the vacant title. Won his last six by knockout. Already developing an aura. Big article about Zab and his relationship with his dad and trainer Yoel in the New York Times this past week. Bobby, a kid that seems destined for fame and fortune. As a former champion, what would you tell Zab to keep him kind of grounded? You know, Steve, the thing I'd impress upon him most is to stay focused. His confidence is great, but sometimes overconfidence leads to careless mistakes, as it did in the Bergman fight. He got dropped being careless. To his credit, he got up and he took care of business, but it won't always be that easy. As he steps up in class, the mistakes will be much more costly. Stay focused, get the job done, have fun after. One of seven fighting brothers, ages 8 to 24. His father, Yoel, raising his children as Israelites. You see the Jewish star on his hat. Sometimes he wears them on his trunks. Zab Judah in the ring as we get to check the numbers right now. We go to the tail of the tape. Judah four years younger, the height almost even at yesterday's weigh-in. Judah and Witter both under the limit, but Witter nearly 13 pounds more at fight time at 152 and a five-inch reach advantage for Judah. And the key rules for this IBF championship fight, there is no standing eight, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, it's a no contest. After the end of the fourth, we go to the scorecards. So here at Hampton Park in Glasgow, Scotland, where the rain has presently stopped, but the weather has a way of changing from moment to moment here in Scotland. We're getting ready for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship. Zab Judah versus Junior Witter. And we're set for the official introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy standing by as Zab Judah gets ready for his first defense of the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship. His father, Yoel, alongside him. His opponent, Junior Witter, from right here in Sheffield, England. So he, of course, the home crowd favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to go with this world championship attraction coming away. Brought to you courtesy of Frank Warren's Sports Network in association with main events and Showtime Championship Boxing as sponsored by Fight Time 2001 and Promote Classic. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation. The president is Hiawatha Knight Supervisor in attendance, Benedetto Montella. This is along with the British Boxing Board of Control. The chairman and steward in charge is Lord Brooks of Tremorfa. Introducing to you our three judges scoring the bout from ringside. From New York, George Colon. From Wolverhampton, England, John Coyle. From Naples, Italy, Vittorio Urso. And introducing to you our referee in charge of the action from Kent, England, Roy Francis. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing silver trunks with black trim, fighting out of Sheffield by way of Bradford, England. He weighed in at already nine stone, 13 and one quarter pounds, or 139 and one quarter US pounds. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with 15 wins, no losses, two draws, with four of his wins coming by way of 
knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the undefeated challenger, introducing Junior Witter. And his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, ready to fight on my right out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with red and white trim, fighting out of Brooklyn, New York in the United States. His weight, nine stone, 13 and three quarter pounds, or 139 and three quarter US pounds. He also is undefeated in his campaign with 22 wins, no losses, one no contest, with 17 of his wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the IBF junior welterweight champion of the world, Zab Super Judah. Once again, our referee in charge, Roy Francis, now to give instructions, 12 rounds of championship boxing schedule. Zab Judah, and then Judah just shoved with her back. Judah, a sharp southpaw with heavy hands, exceptional speed, swarming type fighter, seems to be getting stronger with each fight, and unlike most slick boxers, very aggressive, nine first round knockouts, two of his last three. Witter, as you can tell, very confident, but technically not fancy and awkward, described by Judah as Prince Nassim with no power. Well, that's an interesting comment because Nassim very hard to hit cleanly. We're going to find out if he has that kind of elusiveness. But no power, that's not a good thing. You're, you're going to need to get Zab Judah's respect. Judah said at first he thought that Witter was a nice kid. He felt bad at first saying how easy this fight would be. Now after meeting Witter in person, he doesn't feel so bad anymore. He thinks he's just a boastful, egotistical kid. You know, and Witter said there's a whole gym full of Zab Judas. Oh, I'd like to go to that gym. That's right. With a contract. Judah here to showcase his talents on this grand stage. Clearly the biggest of his career, a dream as he told us to be the co-feature underneath Mike Tyson. Judah not only unbeaten, but hasn't really lost that many rounds in his career. He said he wanted to come right out, keep the pressure on Witter, not give him room to run around and play and do the antics. Right now, throwing a great straight left hand to the body to try and slow down the movement of Witter. Judah is so confident, Bobby. He offered a winner-take-all deal to keep his interest. You know, that's something that most fighters are never going to do. I offered it a few times myself, and two of the three times I would have won, but one time I would have, have to give away the purse. A little risky. But I don't think it's too risky here. Judah said he's going to have to keep the pressure on. That Witter will run. There'll be an early exchange. He'll get out quick so he can let Mike do his thing. Mike Tyson. Trying to be courteous to his buddy from Brooklyn. Well, he's come out very purposeful, but not, not too over-anxious. He's boxing smart. A little slower than normal, but he seems to be sitting on his punches a little better than normal as well. And he learned from his last fight to calm down, be composed, relax, concentrate, don't be overconfident. He was floored by a right hook in the second round by Jan Bergman, came back to knock Bergman out of the fourth. So fancy work here by Judy Witter, who does like to switch, as you can see. Yeah, and he switches literally from second to second. He just switches his feet, switches his hands. Seems to be very comfortable from both sides. I asked him, why does he switch so much? Is it to confuse your opponent? He said, no, it just feels natural. He said he has no problems dealing with southpaws, which Judah is, and no predominant punch to describe his best weapon, but he said he favors the straight left and right hook. But a guy who uh, relies on smarts and boxing ability. Well, a phrase I like to use, effective in their awkwardness, this is the type of guy. And even Zab Judah himself is sitting down, relaxing, not getting carried away, because 
Some guys are so awkward or hard to be effective against. And he continues to be in the disfavor of referee Roy Francis, especially after those shenanigans before the fight began. Francis, who refereed the Tyson Julius Francis fight back in January. You know what? Huh? He's running. I know, it's okay. You know, we know he's gonna run though. We knew that. You fight your fight, that's all. We know he's gonna run. You looking good, baby. Go. Oh, this is your key. Right there. Touch him, touch him, touch him, faint. But put the stop in his face with it. Wait till it faint. Wait till it faint, faint. Stay in the body, go to the head. Stay in the body, go to the head. A lot of times when, when you see him try to throw the left, the hook left. Oh, oh, oh. And don't forget, you've got plenty of what? You've got plenty of power and you've got plenty of time. You understand? You just do it, just take when he comes on. But when he comes in, when he comes in, you frustrate him. And just when he gets into it, then turn his head. You got his junior? Turn his head. Don't let him come into you. Brendan Engel of Prince Nassim Hamed fame in the past. In the face of Junior Witter, Yoel Judah, and the, the venerable Lou Duva in the corner of Zab Judah. Lou told me he wanted to wear a kilt for the occasion here in Scotland, but they couldn't find one big enough. That would be Lou Duva. Round two, scheduled for 12, with the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship at stake. So when a fighter leans so awkwardly, as does Junior Witter, it's very difficult to hit him clean. Again, Roy Francis admonishing Junior Witter. The back of Witter's trunks, as mentioned, reads the hitter, but in round one, he was the runner, circling, but throwing very few punches. You can see that Witter has quick reflexes, which allows him to get out of the way of some of Zab's punches, but his counter, although that was a great counter. Good left hand by Witter that scored, and then he is just throwing, flailing wildly, and goes down to one knee as he slipped. Very reckless by Junior Witter here with a little smirk on his face as well, and Junior Witter would like to continue what he was doing before, but Zab Judah looking to wipe that smirk off Witter's face. Well, to his credit, I think he's confused Zab just a little bit, and Zab doesn't know what angle the punch is going to come from, which makes him, again, effective in his awkwardness. I'm sure Zab Judah has never fought anybody quite like this. It's like a circus act. A little counter punch there by uh, Junior Witter, but very soft. He only has four knockouts, as mentioned, in his 15 wins. Judah 22 and 0 with 17 knockouts, one no contest. Well, you can see why too. He's he's always either on balance or off balance, but he's not really planted. Even when he's on balance and he's moving, he's just not planted. You cannot get power in your punches without planting your feet and turning your body in. Witter's been down only one time in his fifth fight against Andreas Panayi, a Greek in '97, came back to win in the fifth. There was an incredibly wicked left uppercut thrown by Witter that just grazed the tip of the nose of Zab Judah. But one of these times, it's going to be one of these wild swings and misses, and Judah is going to counter. Witter keeps letting himself wide open after many of those wild swings and misses. You know, if you notice, Zab Judah now is dropping both his hands and walking around with the same type of hands-down antics as Witter, and that's... Not necessarily his fight. He's better off keep his hands at work. Again, a wild miss with a left hand by Witter, but Judah couldn't counter. Yeah, Judah's got some uh, carnival in him as well, that's for sure. No question about it. But his punches a lot more effective. Again, Witter's hands down really low, very dangerous as round two ends. I want to give him a plenty of hustle. Don't. Yeah, come here. Don't yeah, keep it. Right, in slow. He doesn't know what to do when you're doing it. I'm telling you. Give him a spin. All right. Keep that. All right. Easy. Yeah. Just keep it together. Witter sometimes off balance, lunging with these moves. Takes a wild swing. There's a nice overhand left to Zab Judah, but then swings and misses badly and takes himself right off balance onto the canvas. 
There's the good left hand, but now watch him. He jumps in, he runs in. Their legs get a little tangled up there. I'm not sure that's what, no, that's not really what twi twists him. He just overswings and loses balance. Get All right, let's go. Punch down. Go. The twisting antics of Junior Witter against Zab Judah here in round three. Witter uh, offering odd angles up, almost like Prince Nassim Hamed, but uh, Hamed does have power. That's a huge difference. But fighters like that can make champions look very awkward, as Bobby has been pointing out. Zab Judah talked about unifying this division. His very first feat, or I should say task, is the former world champion, Teron Millette. But then after that, he has Sean Bay Mitchell, Randall Bailey, and Kasha Zou. Steve, that's a wealth of experience and talent. For him to do that will put him not only above everybody in the division, but one of the premier names in all of boxing. He also talks about having Arturo Gatti move down to 140 and fight him at Madison Square Garden. He also talked about fighting De La Hoya at 147, also a difficult fight. De La Hoya, of course, uh, not cooperating by losing recently to Shane Mosley. The gyrations of Junior Witter rage on here in the round three, but he's not getting anything done. He may get a contract for Hollywood, but not for another fight from this. Well, even before the... Uh, First bell, he was doing a lot of dancing and gyrating in the ring to some of the music in the stadium. He could be a decent dancer. <laughs> Has a little Chris Eubank in him, too, a British. Uh, I, I just fighter. noticed that. <laughs> a little bit of posing. Like it, he likes to admire himself. Former British super middleweight uh, king. Although he's making Zab Judah miss more than I've ever seen Zab Judah miss. That he is. But not making him pay enough. He's also missed quite a bit. Now Judah going to the body with the right. Again, Witter missing like a broken record. Witter uh, just doesn't want to get too close. Oh, Witter just walked into one. And he also countered with a nice left hook. But see, his feet move so quickly. He has great reflexes. He gets out of arm's way very fast. There's a good left hand by Zab Judah. And Witter once again being told by referee Roy Francis to keep the punches north of the border. And I'll give you a little time now to heal. I also thought he hit him behind the head, too. He probably did. And maybe even something else. Again, look how low Witter's hands are. But he's staying so far away from Judah. And it may take like 10 minutes for Judah to find him. How many warnings can you get? Well, I'll tell you right what, uppercut to the Adam's apple by Witter. Witter threw a couple little tap tap shots to the cheek in the temple of Zab Judah. The cheek in the temple are legal. No, I don't mean to, you know, question the referee, but they're, they're legal. Left ten, Joe. Left ten. Left ten. The well, dancing should act. Yes. <laughs> of Junior Witter. Yeah, guess who his idol may have been. Yo, you started to break him down, Zab. Listen to me. That's okay. Yo, you break them down lovely. You break them down lovely. Breathe. How you feel? Okay? You break them down. You know what I mean? You just steady your game plan. Don't let them do all that shit. Just keep touching, touching them, touching the body, touching them in the body. But I want you to do more feints. All right? Faint them more. Faint. Then go. Faint, baby. And you're going to go for everything you do. And yo, take a look at the dirty tactics. Junior Witter lands behind the head there. And I think if one of those punches was low underneath, too, that is definitely behind the head, and a little bit of forearm included. Here's a tighter look at it. You watch the reaction right there. You see the reaction. Zab Judah did hit with low there and there, behind the head with a hand and forearm. Junior Wetter continuously looking for ways to frustrate, annoy, out hustle uh, Zab Judah. I guarantee he's frustrating and annoying, but I'm not sure he's out hustling. I think he's annoying Roy Francis, that's for sure. <laughs> but although, the last round was the best round for Witter. It was a closer round. He landed more, and Judah landed a little bit less. But Witter resorting to dirty tactics in the process. 
Here's the shoulder wiggling by Witter. Straight right to the stomach. But you just have to wonder what those punches have behind them. Another miss with a left hook by uh, Junior Witter, who just keeps switching back and forth from lefty to righty. Try to uh, get his opponent out of his game. But Judah remaining composed, just sort of timing things out, waiting, very patient. You have to wonder, too, Steve, there's a lot of movement, a lot of action as far as body movement, arm movement, leg movement for Witter, taking this fight on very little notice. Lights above flickering in and out. Could be uh, as a result of the uh, inclement weather. Although things have settled down considerably. Did you notice that, Bobby, or is that just my imagination? No, I saw the lights, too, and I'm not sure what it is. Could be the weather, could just be some bad technical. Or it could be bad eyesight on my part. There's another wild swing and a miss, only this time it was from Zab Judah. Look at this little foot movement. And he turned it into an awfully nice right uppercut counter, he did. hitting Judah directly on the chin. Junior Witter scoring with that shot following the foot movement. At the very least, he's entertaining. And then a right uppercut to the body by Witter. Every once in a while, he gets in there. You see, he did something very unusual there. He threw the right uppercut from an orthodox stance, switched over to southpaw, and then jabbed. Something that you wouldn't expect coming back with a southpaw jab after getting hit with a right up uppercut from an orthodox stance. Under a minute remaining in round four, it's scheduled for 12 for the IBF Junior Welterweight title. First title shot for the flashy Junior Witter. And his trainer in the meeting yesterday told us, oh, he's nothing fancy. You gotta be kidding. He's uh, fancy. <laughs> he's, he's certainly interesting. He's weird is what he is. Oh, a straight left hand to the chest by Zab Judah. Judah complained about something that I think maybe was hanging on his neck. Another foul to add to the repertoire of Junior Wood. Yeah, he went for his life, dude. Don't worry about it, though. This guy's fighting out of desperation. He's running out of desperation, baby. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All he's trying to do is that is counterpunch you. That's what he's trying to do. He wait till you, you punch. He's trying to do some quick. He's trying to throw up goal. You got the hand there? Just keep it right You got the hand right there. Pop, catch it. Look, keep pumping that jab, hitting that body. Keep pumping that jab, hitting that body. Every now and then, come with your hook and straight left down the pipe. Or just straight left with your hook. All right? When you, when you come back, but look, when you want to do it, triple up on your jabs. Bing, bing, bing. Ba-doom. Just like that. And try and count him when he leads on to you. Sit there, sit there, sit there, sit there. You all right? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Great. Yeah, Junior. Come I mean, on again, take a walk. Take a walk and shuffle your feet. Cool, damp night here in Glasgow, Scotland. Temperature about 50 degrees and dropping. You can see the vapor coming out of the mouths of the fighters. You heard Lou Duba in the corner of Judah say that winner was running out of desperation. And the old Judah with some. Uh, very emphatic words in the face of his son, Yol, a, a, a black belt and former kickboxing champ. Well, I'll tell you, I'm not sure that Witter's running out of desperation. This appears to be his style. He runs around, confuses people, gets out of the way, and hits you from whichever angle, using whichever hand is nearest you. It's a very unusual style. Those punches falling short by Zab Judah because of the distance, and there's a left-right combination to the head, softly done, but effective in scoring points for Witter. Well, I'll tell you what, in a couple of short instances, he has outslicked the slickster just a little bit, but not overall. And that's the question we posed at the start. Can he outslick the slickster? That's what he's trying to do, because he is certainly not a puncher. Junior Witter and the light colored trunks. See, Judah's also got to be defensively cautious because this guy leaps in. Heads, elbows, everything could wind up clashing and landing. Zab Judah's got two things to worry about. Hitting him and not getting caught with something crazy. I'm waiting for him to do another backflip or somersault. 
during the fight. I don't know, but I learned a couple of dance moves watching. Good. Fred Astaire reincarnated. Judah trying to figure this kid out. Zab Judah's undefeated record and championship at stake. Winner, although relatively unknown, even here in England, undefeated as well, 15 on two, but only four knockouts. Judah had to chase him down and got him with some rubbing punches in the face. As Junior Witter is being told by Roy Francis, don't turn your back. That's right. That is technically illegal. You can't turn your back on a ball. Oh, there's a big left hand by Zab Judah. That scored big time, and the mouthpiece went flying out of Witter's mouth. Yeah, and you know what? Witter got, got stunned a little bit there. He might have he might be out of trouble, but he I can see in his eyes. He had a little problem there for a moment. Judah just waiting for the proper moment and timed that one perfectly. And with a stoppage of the action, Roy Francis picks up the mouthpiece, or gum shield, as they call it here in Great Britain. They clean it off, and then they'll return it to the mouth of Junior Witter. That was the punch of the fight thus far. Big left hand by Zab Judah. Judah just feeling, perhaps in his head, it is just a matter of time. Well, see, once again, it's so very difficult to hit a fighter like Witter or Prince Nazim with two clean shots. It's very hard to keep them in trouble. Their reflexes are spectacular. Another left during that series of punches that scored on the jaw by Zab Judah, who walks away with a smile and bows to Witter's corner. Yes. All right, no problem. In slow, out slow. In slow. He didn't only catch you because you hung around. You took the shot. That was his best. That was his best shot, and you took it. All right. He breathed. His best punch of the night, obviously thrown by Zab Judah. Nice counter left hand mouthpiece. Exits with his mouth. It's really a terrific counter. He puts a lazy jab out. Zab goes under, comes over it. It's a beautifully timed punch, but again, very hard to hit him with the second one. He was out of there, very fleet of foot. Witter feeling the power of Zab Judah, who just a moment ago had to be thrown back into his corner by referee Roy Francis, over anxious to continue what he started in the last round. This is round six. Judah, you might guess, has it in his mind to end matters shortly. I wasn't sure this fight could even get this deep, and now it's looking more and more like a distance fight. Many thought it had the appearance of a mismatch before it began. But the slick work and fancy dancy dancing of uh, Mr. Winner making things a little more baffling for the champion than maybe even expected. I've heard over and over again that in baseball, the hardest thing to do in sports is hit a round ball with a round bat doing 90 miles an hour coming at you from not that far away. But some of the punches thrown here by both of these guys, especially Zab Judah, they're doing 55, 60, and they're three feet away. And you got to see him, recognize him, and slip them all in fractions of a second. Equally hard, I think. Well, trying to catch a guy like Junior Witter may be akin to hitting the major league curve. There's a wild left hand once again, this time Judah. Uh, gets spun around. A wild left by Judah that missed, fortunately, for Witter. He wanted to end it there on one punch. There's a straight left that was off the left shoulder, though, of Witter. Just missed. There's a right left combination to the head, but grazing blows, and now Judah's really turning it up a notch. Judah looking to pour it on here in round six. Witter not as brave as he was earlier. Now the left hand, but again, a grazing blow by Judah. He turns his back an awful lot. He really does. It's just so dangerous. But he's getting away with it. Judah looking to time another punch here. Keep an eye on that strong left of his. Come on, show. The 
the jab, but it's one and done by Witter. The hitter has been Judah, not Witter. Right left combination missing by Judah. Becoming less and less offense, even attempts by Witter. More and more just defense and getting out of the way. Body shot, digging right hand there by Zab Judah. And those shots have to be wearing Witter down. Under 20 seconds remaining in the sixth. As we head for the bell. Let's go to Jim Gray. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. I'm now joined by the former heavyweight champion of the world, Frank Bruno from Great Britain. Frank, you lost your championship four years ago to Mike Tyson. Definitely did, sir. You feel about the car, but when you're outside sitting around, not, no sun or nothing like that, you get freezing, man. Very freezing. Frank, it's good to see you. Frank, nice to see you, man. You take it easy. And hello to everybody in America. Wicked. All right. Back to you, Steve. All right, Jim, the affable, engaging Frank Bruno, who was unquestionably intimidated in his fight uh, with Mike Tyson. Lou Savory says that won't happen. We'll see later in our main event. Well, it appears as Lou Savary's after talking with him yesterday, has the right attitude about this. He's approaching it the right way, with the right ideas and the, and the right things. But uh, can you do him? I could paint it on paper, Steve, that you could be Mike Tyson. Well, I can show you how, <laughs> but can you do it? He's he got it all in theory, doesn't he? But yeah. can he do it in the ring? He does it then. Well, in round six, Judah contended to show examples of his ring experience and continued to pile on points. And now he just chases Witter around. Witter just getting spun around and tied up in nuts. Very awkward. And uh, Judah, you know, he says, hey, you want to face me or back me? I'll keep hitting you. He's offering up less and less offenses. He just wants to get out of the way. Probably just wants to survive now. Well, we've uh, reached the halfway point. Uh, Bobby, unofficially, what does your scorecard say? I, I couldn't find a round. I, a couple rounds that were reasonably close, but I couldn't find a round to give Witter. You know, Zab Judah's getting the job done. Not the way he wants to, I'm sure, but he's still getting it done. So Judah throwing a shutout from, to zip. from Bobby's standpoint. Judah continuing to apply pressure. After figuring Witter out. Three judges working this particular contest, but uh, interestingly enough, in our main event, only the referee, who will be John Coyle, will score the bout. Those are the rules here in the United Kingdom for non title bouts. I don't think we're going to need him. That's what they said in the last fight, and that's what happened which ended in the second round. Julius Francis losing to Mike Tyson. But it's interesting, the referee in that kind of a fight will put the scores in his pocket, and nobody but the ref knows the official score. But I agree with you. I don't think it's, I think it's going to be immaterial. Going into tonight's fight, I thought that Zab Judah needed to use his overall speed, which he has, keep the pressure on, which he's been doing, and the right uppercut inside landed not as much as the overhand left but he's been doing the things he needs to do to win the fight and his counterpart just can't do it he's made Zab miss but he has not made him pay take him into late rounds but with no real effects he's not winning any of the rounds well there's a good left hand out of nowhere by junior winner it scored right on the tip of judah's nose Coming up next, our main event, Mike Tyson versus Lou Sabaris. Let's go into the dressing room of the former champion, Mike Tyson, getting a little uh, stretching exercises in there, a little bit of a rub down, getting ready for his 52nd pro fight, 47-3, one no contest, 41 knockouts, losing to Buster Douglas in Tokyo, and of course the two memorable losses to Holyfield, the rematch by DQ for biting Holyfield's ears. Looks very relaxed. Tattoos all over the body. There's uh, Che Guevara. 
I think he's got Mao there somewhere as he gets ready for Lou Savaris. Back to our co-feature now, round eight. Winner's last punch of round seven, perhaps his best of the fight. He came just before the bell. You know, the interesting thing about when the referee scores the fight by himself, too, he doesn't give his score to an announcer, and they don't announce He just walks over and raises a man's hand. So you don't even know if it was a close fight or a runaway in his eyes. Very secretive in, uh, in Great Britain. But as you say, it will really be an upset if it gets to that point in the main event. It's scheduled for 10. This one's scheduled for 12 for the IBF Junior Welterweight Championship, 140 pounders. Zab Judah in a very compelling division with champions like Kostya Zhu, Sean Bay Mitchell, Randall Bailey, Teron Millet waiting in the wings to try to get back in, former champion. What do you think Judah will need to do to rise above the other champions? You know, he simply needs to beat them all. And again, simply put, it's not a simple thing to do. There's a wealth of talent there, tremendous records, tremendous skills, a lot of experience. It's a whole lot of fight, and I don't think it would be possible to get all of those champions to even sign a fight to fight you. Yeah, it seems like on any given night, any one of those champions can deliver. Right now, it appears to be that Kostya Zhu might be the name, the man to beat. Big power, good boxing skills, good endurance. Right now, he could be the man. Charmaine Mitchell also an incredible fighter, also a southpaw, like Zab Judah. Sue has a fight coming up against the legendary Julio Cesar Chavez on July 29th, right here on Showtime. A fight that many are calling a mismatch in Costa Zoo's favor. It may not be a fond farewell to Mr. Chavez on that night, and I know Costa Zoo has no nice plans for him. Many feeling, of course, that Chavez's best days are behind him. All right, back to the activity here, round number eight, a fight that is being controlled by the champion, Zab Judah, although the challenger is being quite entertaining, Junior Witter. It's impossible to look good against a fighter with this type of style. Nothing is orthodox, nothing is by the book, nothing is the way you draw it up on paper. Punches from certain crazy angles, feet, tangled up, switching every two minutes. It's amazing. If anything, a learning experience for Zab Judah. I guess each fight is a learning experience as he really heats it up now. Judah on the attack, pouring it on for the moment. That was the best three punches in a row that Zab was able to land, but even at that, it was, that was it. There was no more available. He ran back to the ropes, came in and held. Judah looking to fight Teron Millet on August the 5th. Let's go to Jim Gray. All right, Steve. Well, the stadium here in Glasgow seats about 50,000 for soccer. And we were told coming over here that there were about 40,000 seats that were sold for tonight's event. Well, I spoke to the promoters, and they have informed us that about 13 to 14,000 tickets were returned some 10 days to 14 days ago because of the uncertainty as to whether or not this fight would come off and whether or not, in fact, Mike Tyson would show up. Those orders were returned. That combined with the weather tonight, and when you also factor in that there is a city ordinance here in Glasgow and in all of Scotland, a state ordinance, that no one can walk up and buy a ticket because of the problems that they've had with some soccer and the hooliganism that goes on here in this country. So you cannot walk up and buy a ticket. So tonight's crowd is about 24 to 25,000 people. Thus the reason for the empty seat, Steve. All right, Jim, thanks very much for that report. Judah Lands was probably his best combination. Three punches. Two of, at least two of them pretty clean, but again, Witter holds, gets out of the way, awkward, doesn't hit him clean because his head's bent out of the way all the time. Witter has never fought into the ninth round. He's been eight twice. Zab Judah went to the eighth round against Anthony Johnson in 1997. He had a decision with Mickey Ward in 1998. Went to the 11th with Daryl Tyson, also in 98. But he hasn't been this far since that particular fight when he stopped Daryl Tyson. That was for the USBA 140-pound crown. So this 
is somewhat uh, foreign territory, uncharted water for both. This will probably be an overall good experience for Zab Judah just to have this, you know, in his back pocket as experience. It's a very, very unusual, unorthodox style that he can look back on. And if he should ever encounter a similar Nazim type fighter, he'd, he'd probably have some better answers. Leo Judah for the fight did call winner Prince Nassim with no punch, no power. It's funny because Judah is referred to by many members of the media as Pernell Whitaker with power. Many similarities with the future Hall of Famer, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker. Witter continues to try to frustrate the champion, but it's not working. And Witter continues to switch from conventional to southpaw, that time a lunging right hand when he switched back to righty, but had little or no effect. This is a perfect example of some fighters that just not gonna knock out because they're too awkward or they're not there to be knocked out and fight or die, they're there to survive. Well, Witter is a runner, not a hitter. There have been no knockdowns thus far in this fight. Just a slip. That was after a wild swing and a miss by Junior Witter. Earlier in the fight, though, the best punch was a big left hand by Zap Judah, which caused the mouthpiece of Junior Witter to come flying out several feet. That was in round five. Well, you know, you talked about he just, this is the first time fighting into the ninth round. I'm still not sure he's fighting into the ninth round. He's dancing in group. Dancing well. He sure is. Big left hand there over the top by Junior, by Judah. And Junior Witter trying some more shenanigans by sticking one hand up and then punching. Oh, good. No good, baby. No problem. Anything? Okay. Anybody else there would have been out of there. You know what I'm saying? But don't worry about it. You got it. Well, sure. Yo, he's doing good. You relax, you pause, you got your good jab going, you got your body shots, and you catching everything. You see everything that comes, you dropping, you know what I mean? Angle. That's all you just everything you doing. Stay pounding that body, good jab, faint. He's coming, drop. You know what I'm saying? That sounds, watch him on the switch. When he, when he, when he, when he go from here to here, that's when he throw the left hand. That's when he come up with pump two, three jabs in there. Blind him, blind him, blind him. You know how you, know you do with this blind him? Just suck it in when you move. When you knock his head down, turn his elbow, don't turn your hands out. Do what you do in the gym. All right, Smith, Smith, Smith. No, this, no, this round. Just do this round. We got this. This the first round. All right. Come on, Shaw. Round 10 scheduled for 12. Unfortunately for Witter, the theatrics isn't one of the more important components of judges scoring. He's losing to Judah in just about every category imaginable. Punching power, accuracy, and speed. You may notice we're getting some great sound in the corners of both fighters. Uh, very strict rules here. As uh, Junior Witter tries to dig one into the body of uh, Zab Judah, kind of caught him a little bit off balance. The corners have agreed to wear microphones here, but they have strict rules about allowing uh, those overhead boom mics that you often see into the corners here in the UK. And there seem to be limited amount of advice, good advice or otherwise, in Witter's corner. On the side of the coin, though, Judah's corner, all the correct advice. Yoel Judah and Lou Duba doing the honors in Judah's corner. Little aggression here by Junior Witter, but mostly missing. Back comes Judah with a straight left hand, but right off the, the arm of Junior Witter. Again, the switching continues by Witter to try and confuse the champion. But Judah staying very calm and composed, Bobby, just staying with it, trying not to get out of his game plan. There was a good left hand to the belly. Beautiful left hand to the belly. Should have came up with a right hook, but once again, you never can tell where Witter's going to be. He could jump left, right, or back seven feet. He's just crazy. No, 
That's the proper thing for Judah to not get excited, not get crazy. He's winning every round. There is no sense of wasting energy and look foolish and maybe run into a crazy shot that's not necessary. Again, a learning experience. It's all a process. Judah only 22 years old. And Roy Francis telling the winner corner to shut up, pipe down. Yeah, technically, I think it's illegal for the corner to yell at you. Too. I know in certain locations that is the rule. And apparently it is here. Oh, there's a big left hand of the uh, head by Judah. Look out. As Judah just gets shoved down by Witter. Partly off balance. They just continue to yell, more movement from the Witter corner. How much more movement could we see? This guy moves any more, he'll be in Edinburgh. Let's go inside the ropes with Bobby Chez. Speed is always a, is always an important factor. Their speed defensively for Judah, getting out of the way of punches. His head movement is perfect. Can't be hit. Possible to score points if you can't hit something. He is incredibly quick offensively and defensively. That's a perfect example of defensive speed. You got a runner, and that's it, man. You want every round. All right, just stay the way you are. Get the combination on. Get it off. Get it off. Fast. Just watch right. him jumping in. Round Saw Judah gazing into the crowd, chatting with some of the, the fans. You think he's relaxed? There's a beautiful combination to the head by Judah here in round 11. If Witter was relaxed, he isn't now. Zab Judah measuring it out with a straight right hand to the chin. Perfectly timed punches by the champion. His first defense of the title. Now some beautiful head movement by Judah. Big smile on his face. No smile from Witter, who was doing the smiling earlier. Witter's one of those fighters that is just very difficult to catch once again. It's so hard to catch him clean. I can't impress upon people enough. The guy that moves that often in that many different directions is impossible to catch. And Bobby, now it's Judah giving Witter a little taste of his own medicine. Well, why not? He's beating him, too. <laughs> Probably can't outdance him. Well, he is brimming with confidence, and he has reason to be. He's throwing a shutout. And Witter perhaps realizing that desperation is in order. He is going to need the rare knockout. He does not have many of them on his resume, only four in his 17 fights. He's going to need it, though, to win this one. Whenever they get anywhere, <clears throat> excuse me, reasonably close, it's, it's, just, it's just a matter of tying him up. He's looking to hold and grab Judah's head, grab his hands, grab his back, turn him around. He does not want to fight on the inside at all. He thinks they have Judah's right when he said he wanted the pressure and get on the inside, but he, he just can't get there and stay there. Winner, a late substitute for British champion Jason Rowland. And I'll say one thing, he has to some degree entertained some of the fans here with his flashy style, but he is certainly way, way behind on the scorecards. Winner, who often takes fights on short notice, he told us. He took the Jan Bergman fight on short notice, won that fight by decision. Judah missed with the left, a slapping right on the neck. That scored. Final seconds of round 11. After about the fifth or sixth round, you could just take a picture of the round before and re replay it. So I'm gonna replay it. Combination to the head by Judah on the attack again. Now going to the body. Got one on the air with a left 
Japan. And he wants more. This is Judy's best round. It's a combination by Zab Judah. Right, then a left. He's so sharp and quick. He'll throw that right hook and throw that straight left right down the pipe. He's very quick with it. Leaps in with it. There it is. It's very quick. There's a beautiful combination. Very accurate. Speed and accuracy. Almost always beats effective in his offense. Spectacular, baby. All right, last round. Stay sharp. You see the shot? Let him go. He gonna run, Zab. He might try to jump in. Judah urging on the crowd now, and I don't know if you notice it, Bobby, but at the end of the round, he kissed the referee. Uh, okay, that's a new one. He's aggressive and affectionate. <laughs> the, the referee's not scoring in this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. A lot of people think that that's what Savarese may have to resort to. Uh, he may have to do a little bit more. <laughs> Here it is, round 12. The only time Judah has heard the bell ending round 12 was when he won a unanimous decision over Mickey Ward for the USBA 140 pound title, which we mentioned. That was in June of 1998. I have a funny feeling he's going to hear it one more time at the very least. So, if anything, a moral victory for Junior Witter if he can go the distance with the rising star, some feel superstar in the making, Zab Judah. A lot of folks think no limits for this young man, Judah. Well, he brings all the right stuff to the table, Steve. He's disciplined, he's in good shape, he's got great speed, terrific reflexes, good power, wonderful combinations. The, the list of things that he does poorly is very, very slim. Winner's corner is yelling, and get this, Bobby, it's going to be tight. Do they realize how far behind their fighter is? You know what, I've heard corners do and say some crazy things inspire their fighters sometimes it just boggles the mind now that goes beyond trying to give your fighter confidence i think that's just flat out lying to him <laughs> the weather has cleared up nicely we're happy to report no rain and it's about 50. light breeze Nice left hand again by Judah, but once again trying to connect with the right hook and a follow up left hand. His man is gone. Final minute. Judah continues to be in command. seconds of the fight and it appears as if junior winner will at least make it the distance against Zab Judah although Judah thinking otherwise he wants to he wants to knock this guy out that overhand left he Woo. meant to do some damage he just missed five seconds to knock him out he really wants to that one was blocked by the arm and shoulder of winner he made it the distance and now he hugs Zab Judah after all the theatrics. And I believe what I just caught, although I do not read lips very well, was uh, Junior Witter giving praise to Zab Judah and sort of making amends of peace for the antics. <laughs> well, it does uh, seem like Zab Judah is streaking to superstardom, and on the subject of streaking, the roar from the crowd earlier was a male streaker in the crowd. As we await the decision, which is uh, pretty obvious, here's a quick reminder to those of you with internet access. Log on to show.com tonight to chat with three-time heavyweight champ Evander Holyfield starting at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. He's waiting to answer your questions about tonight's fights. 
and his upcoming bout with John Ruiz. So to chat with Evander, score tonight's bouts, and learn more about future Showtime Championship boxing events, log on to show.com. That's SHO.com. Zab Judah awaiting and waiting to go 23 and 0 but the knockouts will stay at 17. So it was a streaker that got the crowd up on the street. Exactly. And I thought it was the announcement of Steve Albert. There you the go. House. Anything <laughs> goes here. Oh yes. In the United Kingdom. Zab Judah. Looking to remain undefeated with his first defense of the IBF Junior Welterweight crown. <coughs> He'll be 23 and 0 with one no contest. His KO streak goes down the drain, though. He was looking for his seventh consecutive knockout victory. It stops at six. Judah set to fight former junior welterweight champ Teron Millette August 5th. Then his plans to unify the title. Very difficult to understand why it is taking so long. This seems so obvious. Judge of ringside, George Cologne scores about 116 to 112. Judge John Coyle scores about 118 to 111. And Judge Urzo scores about 118 to 110. All three in favor of the winner. Still undefeated and still the IBF Junior Welterweight World Champion, Zab Super Judah. So there you have it. A convincing victory for Zab Judah. As he does it again. Coming up next, our main event, former undisputed heavyweight champion Mike Tyson goes against fellow New York product Lou Savaris here in Glasgow, Scotland. Back in.